Listen up, Slick, don't touch the red button. Don't ever, ever touch the red button. That is unless you want to produce some rockets in the back of this car to produce enough thrust to pin us to any surface. Then, yeah, touch it for science. Today we're going to revisit a classic scene from science fiction and use it as a sort of primer on how to do nerdy physics analyses like we do all the time on the show. That classic scene is from the original Men in Black, where Jay and Kay take a rocket car for a ride through the Queen's Midtown Tunnel on its ceiling. Is something like this possible? And if it is, do we have rockets close to that size that can accomplish it? All right, nerd challenge accepted. First step, what do we know? First, let's start with what we know. So looking back at the movie scene, it looks like it takes around 60 seconds for the rocket car to clear the Queen's Midtown Tunnel, which we know is a set length of 1,955 meters. You know, because it's a real place. We can look it up. We can also look up the mass of a 1987 Ford Crown Vic Limited to get some kind of idea of how much thrust the rockets will need to provide to keep the car pinned to the ceiling. And if J and K are maybe 80 kilograms each, then using this combined mass and multiplying it by the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, which is 9.81 meters per second per second, we get a total weight that the rockets have to keep up of around 18,000 newtons. You see, by angling the rocket like they did in the movie, the rockets are accomplishing two jobs here, both accelerating the car forward and using the thrust to pin it to the ceiling. Once we know both of these values, we can use some geometry to find the total thrust involved. Now the second step, math. We already know what the vertical component of this thrust is going to be. It has to at least cancel out the weight of the car. So this is going to be our 18,000 newtons. But what about the horizontal direction? Well, we'd have to look at the car's velocity. We know it has to cover the distance with the rockets attached in just 60 seconds. We can use this equation of motion with the numbers that we already know to get the forward thrust of the car and therefore its acceleration. So let's plug in what we know. We know that the car traveled 1,955 meters. It started from, let's say, position zero. It's initially going let's say highway speeds or 25 meters per second multiplied by how quickly it did it times 60 seconds. This is becoming a little unwieldy, but stay with me. Plus one half times the acceleration of the car during this sequence, which is what we want to find, multiplied again by the time it took to do it or 60 seconds squared. Now solving for A, I won't spare you the math because we have to do it, it's science. Solving for A, we get around 0.3 meters per second per second, which is about a third of a G, which is good because if it's too high, you pass out. And if force equals mass times acceleration, forced in this case being thrust, we can input the mass of the car that we knew earlier and input this new acceleration to find our horizontal thrust, which comes out to be a measly, compared to the other component of thrust, 490 newtons. That's not very much, but it makes sense because at highway speeds, you could clear this tunnel in around 60 seconds anyway. Now sugar in water. I mean geometry. All right, more math, but we're getting to the finishing line here. Remember old Pythagoras and his theorem and also sine, cosine, and tangent? Well, using our thrust triangle here, we can find out not only the angle at which the rockets would need to be pointed off horizontal like it is in the car, but we can find out what A here on our triangle is, which is the total thrust. We already know that B is 18,000 newtons and C is 490 newtons, so the rest is just Plug and chug, as my engineering professor used to say, and now sounds weird in my head. All right, so plugging and chugging uh, still sounds weird. A is equal to 18,056 newtons, so not that much different than the vertical thrust. It looks like almost everything is going to keeping the car up, and the rocket angle is 88 degrees, which is totally different than it is in the movie. The angle in the movie is very low, but Science? 
makes more sense this way. All of this would just be a nerdy math exercise unless there was something in the world that could actually accomplish this feat. Oh wait, there was an experimental Russian rocket called the RD0410 that provided twice the amount of thrust that we need and was about the same size as the rockets that we see in the movie? Well, there you go, totally plausible. I am surprised. And you don't have to go all sci-fi with alien rocket cars to find a car powerful enough to drive on a ceiling. F1 cars go so fast that they encounter enough air resistance to throw them up into the air. So what do they do? They have spoilers on the back that provide a downforce from this air moving over their bodies that can be equal to three times the amount of weight that the car has. That means it could drive on a ceiling. Look at science. Want more science? Check out my last video on why Kylo Ren's lightsaber has a great design. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos. If you want Because Science, two days earlier than anyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for future episodes, you can hit me up in the comments section below. Thanks.